The Northtown News Magazine is brought to you in part by eVoter. eVoter is proud to be a sponsor of the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. I'm Marty Levinson, and you're watching Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Hi there, I'm the real Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers here, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at www.ntnm.org. In the first two months of 2010, 15,000 shows watched on YouTube. Are you people out of your minds? Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Um, community policing, we're really big on that. That's caps24.org. And um, if you don't, you know, the meetings are not being that well attended right now. Crime is down. I mean, we've got a really great new police commander. I'm very happy with Michael Wick. We'll find out if our next guest likes him, too. Um, but I, I got to tell you, it's like we, we've had so little stuff going on in the neighborhood. We're getting short attendance. The meetings are only taking 30, 35 minutes. So I want to urge all of you to come out. If, in the 24th District, Sonny Hirsch in his spare time is chairman of the District Advisory Committee of the 24th District. If you go to caps24.org, you will find where all nine meetings are for the individual beats as well as you got the Hispanic um, police beat too, Sonny? So all, all the various uh, stuff in the neighborhood. We urge you guys to uh, check it out. In the meantime, it is a pleasure to introduce uh, our guest, who is the alderman of the ward right next door to us, as a matter of fact, just a few blocks away, and that's Alderman Joe Moore. How are you doing? Avi, good to be here. First of all, my pleasure. And you know what? The big talk about you has been what you're doing right now with your um, aldermanic menu. Oh, sure. Well, first, I think we should tell people what an aldermanic menu is. Sure. Uh, what the aldermanic uh, menu is, is a uh, sum of money, this year $1.3 million, that each alderman in the city of Chicago, all 50 of them, uh, get to spend at their discretion for capital projects. And capital projects are infrastructure. It's like streets, alleys, um, uh, sidewalks, new street lights, uh, public buildings, and the like. And um, each alderman, as I said, for the last 15 years has gotten a sum of money, usually around a million to a million point three to spend at their discretion. And what I have decided to do this year is rather than me making those decisions, I'm gonna turn that power over to the residents of my ward. And we have a process called participatory budgeting. It's underway right now where the residents of my ward are deciding what projects uh, are gonna be funded this year. And we're gonna put up a whole list of proposals that the community has come up with to a vote of the entire community on April 10th. As a matter of fact, I was checking the website. You know what? I, I almost forgot I wanted to ask you about this. I was looking at the map and some of the proposed projects. What does brick mean? Because I saw you had things like, um, you know, you know, you had like, uh, you know, throughways. There were a number of different categories on a map of proposed uh -huh. projects. I mean, fixing streets or, or uh, there was throughways, there was brick. I mean, um, g give me an example of what people are suggesting. Well, they're suggesting some of the more, uh, shall I say, routine items, uh, resurfaced streets new street lights, but there's also a lot of creative energy going around and uh, there's a group of folks that are uh, pushing for uh, murals uh, to be painted under all of our L viaducts. Uh, there's a group of uh, people pushing for a community garden uh, where, where people could uh, grow their own food. Uh, there are people who are pushing for a dog park um, and uh, these are all items that will appear on the ballot on April 10th and uh, folks can come to the Chicago Math and Science Academy, which is located on uh, Clark Street, just across from Tui Park. Just north of Romanian um, kosher food. The home of some really great, well, I'm not allowed to plug them. <laughs> they're great food, though. I had, I had some great corned beef from uh, Romanian kosher. Yeah, I happen to like them a lot, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, from 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 in the afternoon on uh, Saturday, April 10th, people can come, hear presentations about the projects, um, and then uh, cast their vote. Uh, they'll, they'll get eight votes, and uh, they can vote for up to eight projects. 
or they can vote for less than that if they don't want to, you know, uh, if they really are interested in supporting certain projects. It's not a cumulative vote. It's one vote per project, but up to eight votes. And we're also going to have early voting. So if uh, you can't oh, make it, you're out so of town on April 10th. So and don't go on a Saturday. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there will be opportunities for you yeah. and for others who, for whatever reason, can't vote on that Saturday. And they will uh, be able to vote at my ward office uh, mm. during the week prior to that. And the projects will be presented there. They can look at the, uh, uh, the photographs and the drawings and the other presentations that the community residents who are advocating for those projects uh, uh, have put together, and uh, they'll get to vote then. Well, by the way, for those of you watching this in exotic locations, and speaking of YouTube, one of the cool things about YouTube is you can actually see where your show is being watched, including things like what country really? or where in the world. And for those of you who watch the show, and some of the people watch it on a regular basis, off the African coast, okay, in the Mediterranean, in China, so it could be some people wow. who are from here are on a cruise ship or from the area. It's very cool. I well, should show you the map sometimes. Well, you know, uh, and, you know this and, has been the talk of town. You know, the idea that that somebody is letting the people decide on the this is this, <laughs> this is this is unique to the United States. Uh, uh, participatory budgeting, uh, where you literally take a portion of a, a city budget or a government budget and let the people decide how that money is being spent, has never been tried before here in the United States. However, in other parts of the world, it's, it's become quite common. Uh, South America, Europe, uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, they've all tried some measure of uh, participatory budgeting where uh, the municipality takes a, a portion of their budget and says to the people, uh, you decide how the money's spent. The, um, I just think it's a really cool idea, and I well, definitely think know, it's worth a shot. You know, and what, what's great about it is, yeah. is, number one, it's transparent. Yeah. You, you don't have to wonder whether the... Uh, Alderman is uh, uh, paving the, the street of uh, a favored campaign contributor. Uh, you don't have to uh, worry about whether, you know, someone's precinct captain is getting their sidewalk repaired because of that. It's all, it's all done not by me, but by the, the, the people that uh, right. and they I don't represent. Right, and worry that, you know, it's because and you it's want to take done, care of your cousin who came in from Denver. All or? the committee <laughs> meetings, all the community <laughs> meetings are done in public, as you said. Yeah. It's all on, on the participatory budgeting blog. If people want to go go to that, you can visit my uh, website, ward49.com. That's ward, the, the number 49.com. And then you click on the participatory budgeting uh, link that's on the on the right side of the um, homepage. And you go straight there, and it'll also connect you to the blog where you can submit ideas of projects that you'd like to see uh, uh, placed to the uh, voters for a vote. Um, and you can you can look at the deliberations of the of the various committees and read what they've been writing, uh, read what other people's ideas are. It's all transparent. It's all open. And at a time when people are are angrier than hell at yeah, government are. and and people who are making these decisions because these decisions are too often made behind closed doors. Uh, we're doing something totally different here in the 49th Ward. No, I just think it's a great idea. I really do. And by the way, there's something like 60 suggestions so far. And, yeah. and there's the maps I was referring to. And I still don't quite understand what the brick meant in terms of improvements. But uh... Yeah, I don't either. I'll have to go look at that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but you know what? I get the regular things. And, um, you, you know, it, it's like one of the things I do like, like about your office very much is everything is pretty transparent in general. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we're not... Uh, uh, Transparent decision making also occurs in zoning. Uh, every time someone has a, a, a zoning matter that comes before me, uh, they want a zoning change. And as you know, in Chicago, uh, aldermen have pretty much total control over zoning and land use issues in their community. Yeah, with the exception of the Children's Museum. <laughs> well, that's a, we could talk about that, but generally, 99 times out of 100, they do. Uh, and. Uh, and we have a very transparent process. I have an advisory committee consisting of neighborhood residents who advise me on zoning issues. Uh, we have community meetings. And then ultimately, I, I announce my decision uh, through my email blasts that, uh, it, you know, explaining what my decision is and my rationale for it. And uh, anyone who's interested in who lives in the ward or who lives off the coast of Africa or wherever <laughs> they're watching this, uh, and would like to um, uh, receive uh, my uh, email blast that uh, let you know what's going on in the community, what, what meetings are taking place, uh, um, what decisions are being made. Uh, just go to ward49.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and then you can 
sign up right there and you'll you'll get information on uh, what's going on in the 49th Ward. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was, uh, well, we were talking before, and the, the, the email that came today on the day we're filming, this is probably going to be on the air about a month later, um, you know, I, I, I like the idea of, I, I mean, I don't know that you took a stand one way or another, but I know that there's a, there's a, a, a person who's got a restaurant pub at 3800 North Damon who wants to open up on 1400 on Morris. Yeah. And, and well, go ahead. Well, uh, it's um, uh, one of the things that's really exciting about what's taking place on Morris Avenue and Glenwood is we're really beginning to, to see the, the, the uh, uh, burgeoning arts and entertainment district. Uh, we've got the uh, Morse Theater opening up again soon. Uh, next month, uh, a 300-seat uh, music venue with a restaurant. Uh, we have the Glenwood Bar, which opened up a year ago, and they've just expanded. It's, you know, they're doing uh, lots of wonderful community activities there. Uh, we've got Dukes, uh, and we've got uh, uh, this new place that's opening up on the 1400 block of, of uh, Morse. Um, uh, he needed a zoning change, so we had a community meeting. He made a presentation. And it received overwhelming support of the people who attended the meeting, as well as the email comments that I've gotten from folks. Uh, and it, it's going to be a, a combination bar and restaurant with live entertainment in the evening. A, a very, it's at a large place. It's, a, it's an intimate venue, uh, so most of the music will probably be acoustic music. Uh, but it, it, it provides another entertainment choice for Morse Avenue. And an important thing is, is that it brings decent people to the street. Um, yep. You know, uh, after it gets dark there, uh, most of the other businesses have closed down. Uh, you know, you, you, you'll have continued activity. He's going to have a, a sidewalk cafe in the, uh, in, in the summertime. Uh, and it, I think it'll help uh, do to Morse Avenue what um, uh, the businesses that have opened up on Jarvis Square at Jarvis and Greenview have done for that neighborhood, bringing life and vitality to the community. And driving away, you know, the last vestiges of uh, loitering and drug dealing that you know, were occurring on Jarvis Square, it's, it's no longer there because now you have all these biz businesses, these bars and these restaurants that are uh, providing um, uh, wonderful uh, venues for people to attend and to, and to socialize. And we're doing the same thing on Morse Avenue. By the way, just as an aside, and I wasn't even thinking about this for the interview, I actually was able to distribute more copies in um, in your area of Jewish Chicago than I have in many years when it was used to really be a Jewish neighbor and you had delis like Ashkenaz there. Yeah. Because I did hit some of the new venues, they were happy to take the copies, and they all went. Yeah. No, I saw I I, <laughs> I saw your paper all over my neighborhood. Yeah. So that's great. No, that was uh, terrific. I wish it really was all over, but it wasn't. It wasn't a few. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just hope people weren't throwing it on the street because we do want don't want you to litter. <laughs> but anyway, I no, think I want to reading it cover to cover. Uh, I think. Well, thank you. I, I got to tell you, I really appreciate the fact that um, when you see a neighborhood like that, that all of a sudden is getting solid businesses. There were times when you know, like like being a member of the uh, of the police, you know, uh, being a beat facilitator, member of the advisory committee. Uh, if somebody wanted to was going to come up on the Morris L, like I, I'd say, hey, let me pick you up. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, well, clearly uh, uh, Rogers Park has had its challenges, but it's really has emerged in the last few years as a as a much safer uh, neighborhood, um, a neighborhood with a lot of vital businesses. Not to say we still don't have our challenges, no question. But if you compare where Morris Avenue is today compared to where it was ten years ago. Mm -hmm. It's no comparison. By the way, I also see a lot of stuff written up on Jarvis Avenue. Some of the restaurants now are getting written up by the regular mm -hmm. newspapers. Yeah. So you got a better brand of that, plus you've got your own share of pizza and margarita places. <laughs> or right. whatever the new... Uh... Well, um, uh, Gruppo di Amici is a wonderful Italian restaurant mm. located in the Jarvis Square area. Um, there's Taste, which is a, a place you can get gourmet wines and cheeses. And, of course, Point and Still, which is uh, an Irish pub uh, that has... Uh, help to provide life and vitality to uh, Jarvis Square after hours. It's a, it's a nice little uh, combination of businesses as well as a number of uh, really neat little uh, uh, specialty boutiques that are opening up right in that, uh, uh, that uh, two-block area. Yeah, you've also got a farmer's market coming. We do mistaken. indeed, yes. Uh, the uh, Glenwood Sunday Market uh, is uh, starting up this summer. Uh, every Sunday morning uh, from well, Sunday morning and afternoon from about 9 to 3, there will be a farmer's market on Glenwood and Morse. Uh, and uh, again, it's an, an, another effort on our part to 
first of all, bring more folks to Morse Avenue and Glenwood and see what the, see the changes that have taken place. Um, to provide more healthy eating alternatives for folks in our neighborhood, to get fresh produce. Three, to support local farmers, to support local, uh, local food production, uh, um, which of course is much more environmentally sound and has a much smaller carbon footprint on our planet. Um, and uh, I think, uh, I'm just excited about it. We just had uh, a few weeks ago a, a chili cook-off to raise uh, funds for the Glenwood Sunday Market. And um, it was the people were out out the door, uh, uh, wanting to uh, to socialize and and support uh, with their checkbooks and their wallets uh, this Glenwood Sunday Market. You know, it, and you know, I, I, if I could put please, a please, please. personal plug in, yeah. uh, the person who's heading this up is uh, none other than Barbara Moore, who happens to be my wife. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm very very proud <laughs> of it, and so we're. Uh, you know, this is a, a vision that, that she came up with and uh, quickly uh, got uh, uh, Rogers Park Business Alliance on board and, and a lot of the neighborhood businesses on board. And everyone's really excited about it. So uh, f folks, you're out there, whether you live in my neighborhood or, or, or elsewhere in the north side of Chicago, uh, come this summer to uh, Morse Avenue in Glenwood on a Sunday morning and get your fresh produce. Yeah, I got to tell you, the way I found out about it is... Uh as a rule on Facebook, I won't become a fan of anybody. You know, being a reporter, I want to stay objective. Um, there's a couple, very few things I'll become a fan of. And, and Jane Hoffman, who's one of the, the beef facilitators in uh, right by the Morceau mm -hmm. over there, asked me to be a fan of the Glenwood uh, market. Sunday market. Yeah. yeah, that's how I found out about it, and I started reading up. And, and those of you who know me know that I've got, like, my own organic garden out in the backyard during the summer. I've already bought my seeds, by the way. We're I've bought my seeds in February already. And I'm planning on planting lettuce. This is the first week of March when we're filming. So uh, you can actually plant lettuce outside at this point. But I'll put it in pots in case I need to bring it outside. <laughs> Inside, rather. But uh, you can actually do stuff like that early and actually be eating the stuff for, uh, for late March, early April. But I think that's a great idea. You know what? Let's talk about... I, uh, you know what? I was trying to talk about this with my... Uh, actually, chronologically, the guest who was on before you came on. Um, but, you know, the, the mayor has talked about... The idea of putting an inspector general on the um, on the alderman, uh -huh. and I was wondering what your take was about that. Well, I welcome the alderman. I, mean, I welcome the mayor to um, to my idea. Uh, this was something that people have been talking about for years, and that about a year ago, I actually introduced an ordinance that would expand the powers of the inspector general to investigate aldermen. Um, you know, it's outrageous when when. Uh, uh, mayor Daley first was elected mayor back in 1989. One of the first things he did upon assuming office was he, he established the Office of Inspector General. Uh, I applauded him for that at the time. But, uh, you know, outrageously, yeah. uh, the city council, when they voted to adopt that ordinance, voted to exempt themselves. So the inspector general can uh, inspect any city employee, can, can uh, explore... Any allegations of, of political corruption or malfeasance or waste or inefficiency, but they have to stop if that investigation leads them to the office of an alderman. Why should we be exempt from that? Why should we be above the law? It seems to me to be a real simple, simple and elementary case, but unfortunately, a lot of my colleagues uh, disagree with that. So um, I'm happy to see now that the mayor has embraced this concept. Um, and the mayor's got a pretty good track record of getting things through the city council when he really wants to. That's an understatement. <laughs> and um, and so I, I expect that it, that particularly since this is an we're coming up on a, an election year, uh, all of us in the city council and the mayor will have to run for re-election next February. Uh, that um, if nothing else, uh, the alderman will believe it to be the politically expedient thing or the politically right thing to do to support something that is. Um, not only politically smart, but also a good government measure. Well, let me ask you, does it bother you, the idea that the executive branch is is appointing well, the executive? See, I like the idea in general. I agree mm -hmm. with you. And look, what, what have we had? Like, what, 30 aldermen indicted in the last 30 years? Convicted. 29 <laughs> aldermen in the last, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's not like there isn't. since 1972. It's not like there isn't a little bit more than smoke there. So I, I, I more than understand, but but aren't you worried about the ma the executive branch appointing somebody to uh, to watchdog the uh, legislative well, branch? Uh, 
both the previous Inspector General David Hoffman and, and the current Inspector General, Mr. Ferguson, they are beyond reproach and they have not, uh, you know, uh, hesitated to investigate members of the, of the mayor's uh, departments and the mayor's office. Uh, and they have been at odds with the mayor's law department on several occasions. So these aren't folks who are the tools of the mayor. And people who say that, that the inspector general, my colleagues who say, well, we can't have the inspector general investigate us because it'll just be the mayor investigating us, they don't understand that these inspector generals are men of integrity, uh, they are men of independence, and they have shown by their, the, their very conduct that they are not in the mayor's pocket. But even if, maybe sometime in the future, there might be an inspector general who may be a tool of the mayor, well, I have a solution to that. Uh, part of the or uh, provision of the ordinance that I introduced a year ago uh, says that the inspector general will be appointed by the mayor with the approval of the city council from a list of, uh, of candidates supplied by an independent body. And I suggested the U.S. attorney, uh, the state's attorney, the attorney general, uh, representatives from the Chicago Bar Association, the Chicago Council of Lawyers, uh, the Better Government Association, um, they would get together and, and nominate a list of three people from which uh, the mayor and the, would, would select subject to the approval of the city council. So that provides, I think, uh, a, a large measure of protection against the mayor just appointing some flunky to do his bidding. Uh, and it seems to me that if, if that's a, a concern on part of some members of, of, of the city council, some of my colleagues, well, then they should embrace my measure. Okay. Okay, good answer. Um, are you going to run for alderman again? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm announcing it right here on your show. Terrific. That I am running for re-election next year. Well, that I'm actually glad to hear. And I, I actually, I'd be more than happy to vote for you if you want to give me a well, I don't really live in your ward. But well, well, you have to move to the ward. You know, we can't do that anymore, Avi. Um, no. It, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you have to um, live in the 49th ward. But you know what? Good yeah. news. You have plenty of time. The election's not for another 11 months. No, that's true. And as a matter of fact, I, well, I, basically I figure that, that certain battle lines are already forming. And the question, in, in, for instance, in the 50th ward, which I'm following more closely, is who might have moved in because you have to legally move in 12 months beforehand. That's right. Well, you have to be a, a resident of the ward at least one year prior to assuming office. So uh, we assume office uh, in early May. So it would be May of uh, 2011. So you'll have to, in order to run for alderman legally, you have to have moved into the ward by May of this year. Oh, I thought it was February, actually. No, actually, it's, I, I don't believe it's from the... And we had a, our election lawyer here a little right. while ago, Jim Nally, could have answered that question. But I believe it's from the time you take office. Interesting. But, interesting. Don't, but, but don't quote me on that. Okay. No, no, no. But, uh, okay, it'll be interesting. I mean, you definitely had a real dogfight last time. Right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, politically, obviously, in order to run for alderman, you have to show some, uh, 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 you know, commitment to the neighborhood. That, uh, and that means that uh, you have to have a record. And moving in a, a, a year before you run for alderman it suddenly doesn't necessarily indicate any record of concern or understanding of the community you represent. No, not in the you know, least. And, and that's the one thing about being alderman that's very important is that unlike any other job, it really requires someone who has their pulse on the neighborhood, someone who is shown by their record over the years of really caring about the neighborhood, of being involved in block clubs and in community organizations and, and neighborhood cleanups. You can't just walk out of nowhere or be hidden for a period of time uh, and decide one day that you're going to run for alderman. Uh, people don't, don't look kindly to that. They want someone who has uh, shown not just by their rhetoric but by their commitment uh, that, that they really care about the community that, and understand the community that they're um, uh, asking to uh, represent. I got to tell you, from my standpoint, I mean, you're doing the community participation on the um, on, on the aldermanic menu. I think is is probably as brilliant a counterstroke as I've seen in the last couple of years by any of the aldermen. Well, well, thank you, Avi. And, and what I hope uh, is that my colleagues will follow my example. Um, I think there's a reluctance on the part of of elected officials to surrender power, and I oh, understand that's that. That's definitely true. <laughs> I understand that, but. Um, my belief is by, by surrendering power, you gain power. Uh, because uh, by um, s surrendering my power to unilaterally decide 
how to spend um, uh, tax dollars and turning it over to the people who actually pay those taxes. Yeah. Um, what I've done is, you know, shown them that I trust them, uh, shown them that uh, that I've listened to them, and uh, and and as a, and they also understand the limitations that those of us in government operate under. They understand that you know you have to make trade-offs. You can't have everything, and that things cost money, and so you have to make tough choices. And by by gaining that understanding, I think they gain a better appreciation for those of us in public office, and and I as a result, I think we 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 gain more trust. And one of the things that is really lacking in government today is trust. Understatement. Uh, and I believe what this is this process that we're doing in the 49th Ward is helping me to uh, enhance uh, the trust that I already believe I had, but certainly uh, enhance that trust uh, that people have in the person that's representing them on the local level. Are you seeing more real estate sales these days? or It's still pretty slow, Avi. I mean, we, uh, like every other part of the nation and indeed throughout the world, uh, we have been reeling, we're still reeling from this uh, economic crisis. Uh, banks aren't lending money. Um, um, people are, uh, talking to people are either underemployed or out of work or they're concerned about being out of work. And so it has had a, you know, it's, it's had an impact on our, our local businesses. It's, um, uh, while we don't have the same level of foreclosure problems that they have in the south and west sides of the city. Uh, we still have a number of foreclosures. So, so people are hurting out there. And, um, you know, it's important that, uh, you know, we do what we can at all levels of government to try to reach out to folks and uh, try to help them out any way we can. Is there any new uh, construction going on right now? Or? Um, there, uh, there's very little, but we did have a, a very interesting proposal uh, that uh, the community considered uh, uh, in, in, at a community meeting in late February, um, you know, Howard Street, the old Wisdom Bridge Theater yeah. that, that, uh, uh, that hosted some of the most innovative live theater anywhere on the north side for many years. Uh, you know, as you know, the theater moved out some 20 years ago. Uh, the building still stands. Um, a, a arts group attempted to uh, uh, find someone to try to renovate the building, and it was determined that the building's not salvageable. It's just too far gone. So um, we've got a developer who has a, an interesting plan that he, that he presented to the community to uh, uh, tear down that old building and a building next door and build a new structure that would, that would hopefully attract uh, live theater back to Howard Street, as well as provide some uh, affordable home ownership opportunities for people in the neighborhood and in the residential part above where the theater would go. Cool. Yeah, that's, I haven't heard the Wisdom Bridge in, yeah, about 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely some... Uh, what, what else you got? We've got about a minute left. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I think the, the, the most important thing that I want to leave is that for those of us, for those of uh, the listeners who, and viewers who live in my ward, to please participate in the participatory budgeting process. Um, um, Hopefully this show will air before April 10th. I'll do my best to get and, it on now that and, you said uh, that. Yeah. And, uh, and come out and vote. Um, either vote at my office uh, the week before April 10th at 7356 North Greenview, Greenview and Jarvis. Or uh, come out to the Chicago Math and Science Academy on the 7200 block of uh, North Clark Street across from Tui Park Saturday from 9 to 3 and cast your ballot and decide, help decide how your tax dollars are being spent in the 49th Ward. I want to thank you very much, Alderman Joe Abby, Moore. It's always a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And what's the phone number up by you? My my phone number is 773-338-5796. That's 773-338-5796. Uh, and uh, my uh, uh, website is ward49.com. And I want to thank you very much. I want to thank my entire technical crew, crew Sonny Hirsch. I want to thank our, our newly infused peanut gallery from Colorado. And uh, thank all of you for joining us. And um, see you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.